Hey, welcome to another video. This is Diabetic, and I'm Justin. I have type 1 diabetes, and today I want to talk about something really awesome that comes with Dexcom, and that is Dexcom Follow. It is a super useful tool for caregivers or parents of those with type 1 diabetes, or even for people who have type 1 diabetes and just want their friends and family to be notified when they're having a severe low or high. Now, I'm going to get into what this looks like on the Follow app for people who are using it, how people with the Dexcom app, G6 and G7, can set it up for others, and how it looks on an Apple Watch, because you can even, as a follower, use the Apple Watch to follow people's numbers. And also, you can follow multiple people's numbers. If you have a whole family or some family and friends who have type 1 diabetes and use Dexcom, you can have them all on your follow app. Personally, I've found the Dexcom follow app to be very useful. And what I like most about it is that I have a few friends following me, a couple. And when I've gotten into severe lows, scary lows, I've gotten texts or even FaceTime calls from them. And having them in those moments, just checking in on me to see if I'm okay, it means a lot, especially when, when you're low, you can feel really anxious and scared and nervous and just having that added support of knowing that someone's in it with you is such an added comfort. So I highly recommend anyone who does use Dexcom to at least share it with one other person. You can also pause those notifications, which I'll get into. Also, it's important to note Dexcom Follow is an internet based system. The Dexcom someone's wearing does not connect directly to your app as well. What happens is the application that's connected to that Dexcom user, that syncs all the information in real time to the internet and your Dexcom follow app downloads from there. So if that person doesn't have access to internet, then you won't have access to their numbers. Interestingly, Dexcom Direct to Apple Watch is coming out in the future, and I'm very curious to hear whether or not if that person has an internet-based Apple Watch, if their Dexcom can connect to that, if that will also come to your Dexcom follow. I did ask the Dexcom CEO about that in an interview at ADA last week. It's on my YouTube channel and my podcast, and I didn't get the most direct answer. But I can only imagine that that would make the most sense for this feature and be really helpful for parents and caregivers. All right, let's get into how you set this up. Let's start with the Dexcom G7 app. It's on my home screen. Tap on that. Then I'm going to go to connections on the bottom. And from there, you can see that share is on. So I'm going to tap into there. I could just turn off that toggle at the top and it will stop sharing with everyone who I'm sharing with. Let me turn it back on though. So setting up a follower is really easy. As you can see, I have a few already, but I'm going to do invite follower. Then what I would do is I'd give them a name. So I'm just going to call it test because this is a test. And then I would put in their email address. From there, it would send that person an email inviting them to be a follower. Then they'll be allowed to download the Dexcom follow app and set that up and they're good to go. Super easy. And you can add a bunch. I have currently four, including myself. Let me show you what you have access to within a follower. So let's go to me. This is my own account that I'm following and I can decide what type of data I share. So here you can see I can either just share the current sensor reading, just the number and the arrow, or also the current sensor reading and a trend graph. Let me show you what that looks like real quick on the Dexcom follow app while I have this going. So currently it's got the current sensor reading, so I'll go to the follow app, and then you'll see I'm listed there and I can tap into it and it gives me different graphs. That's what the follower would have. Then if I go back into this app and I turn on just current sensor reading, it's gonna stop doing the graph. I go back, you see it's just got my number. If I tap in, it's just got settings. It doesn't have any graph anymore. Next, you can see what notifications that person is signed up for. So here you can see all the notifications are off, but if I turn them on on my other account, they'll turn on. At the bottom, you can pause you're sharing just for that person. If you do that, that person will get a notification that you stop. You see, I just got a follow notification saying that diabetic stop sharing with you. They will know if you stop sharing. So beware. I can go right back to the top, 
and continue sharing and I'm good to go. Then you can also, of course, remove a follower from within there. Setting up Dexcom Share on the G6 is really just as simple. On that app, just tap Share on the top left of the app screen. Just get started. You're just going to read some information that it shows you. Make sure you have internet. And then from there, you can put in who you want to share with and what their email address is. And from there, you can invite followers. It will ask for their email address. And basically, it's the same type of system. And it will all go back to that Dexcom follow app. So for anyone on G6 and G7, all of those people can still be on the same follow app. Now, let me show you what things look like on the Dexcom follow app. I've got it on my home screen, tap in there. Here is where there would be a list of various people that you're following. Currently, I'm only following myself, but a lot of people have family members, multiple family members that would be listed here. You can tap into that. So I can go through and see what the blood sugar levels have been for up to 24 hours. It doesn't show you like red and yellow lines. I'm not sure why. As a follower, I also have the ability to change the alerts that I want. So there's a gear option in the top right from the graph area. I tap on that and this is where I have multiple notifications. So for urgent low notification, let's go in there. Currently I have this turned off. I can turn that on and I, I can adjust when I get notified. So if I wanna get notified below 55, 50, 45, all the way down to 40. Then I can also do a sound. So I can do urgent low, urgent low attentive. I thought I'd be able to hear it, but you can't. <laughs> um, so there you go. That's just one of the notifications. You can also do low notifications. And then you can also decide like on the time limit. So if it's for more than 30 minutes, uh, you'll get a notification. I can also go in and change that to up to two hours or as low as five minutes. I'm going to turn that off again. Then you can also get a notification for no data, high notifications, and you can also go in and change the graph height between 300 and 400. That's pretty much it for the follow app on the phone, but you can also put the follow app on an Apple Watch. Let me show you how. So I've got my Apple Watch here. I'm going to hold down on the home screen first and I'm gonna edit these widgets I have. So I'm gonna slide over and I'm gonna get rid of this one. That's my DIY loop. If you wanna learn more about that, I've got videos on it. And I'm gonna switch this to the follow app. I believe it's called follow and not Dex, or no, it's called Dexcom follow, I believe. I forget this every time. No, it's called follow. Make sure you look for that because it's not Dexcom follow, it's follow. Now, I've got that in the bottom corner. The downside is it doesn't show you the number or arrow of someone on the screen, which I wish it did, especially if you're only looking at one person's levels at all times, that would be a nice option to have there, but it doesn't. So I have to tap into follow and it will show me basically what you want to see, the information. So here you can see Diabetech. I can tap on the screen and it will change between the different graphs. Now, I don't have it set up to see another person's sugar levels, but I will try and test that out and put that in this video or in a future video, so stay tuned for that. But that's pretty much the follow up. I like that you can put it on the home screen, so that's really nice, just tap in there and see that person's blood sugar levels. So there you have it, that is Dexcom Follow. Let me know in the comments when Dexcom Follow has helped you. I wanna hear your stories. Also, let me know if you have any more questions about it. I'll answer them to the best of my ability or I can even reach out to Dexcom and get that answer for you. I've got a lot more content on Dexcom. I did a Dexcom G7 review. I also just interviewed their CEO about direct to Apple Watch, which is coming. So basically, that means that the, the Dexcom G7 will be able to go directly to the Apple Watch without needing an iPhone in the middle. Very interesting interview, and I'm excited to see what that looks like coming at the end of the year. I've also got other videos on here, so you gotta check those out. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more videos every Friday and my podcast every Monday, also on other major podcast platforms. I'm Justin, and I'll tech you later.